Welcome back sa ating channel. Naging mainit nga na usapin di umano sa mundo ng social media. Tila nagsalita na nga rin si Rodante Kong Marcoleta at hindi nga pinalagpas ang isyu ng Amerika. At tila pinaliwanag nga na tila magdahan-dahan nga muna si President Bongbong Marcos sa kanyang desisyon dahil tila gagamitin lang ang Amerika ang bansang Pilipinas. Tila maraming ang kontra dito. Ngunit bakit kaya nag bubulag-bulagan ang ating Pangulo. Ito ang banat ng maraming netizen. Kaya naman ay sana mag magising na siya sa katotohanan dahil pati nga si Senador Aimee Marcos, Vice President Sara Duterte ay tila kontra nga na papasukin ang 50,000 Afghanistan dito sa bansang Pilipinas. Sana ay pag-aralan muna ito ng maayos bago ito. Kunin ni President Bongbong Marcos, ito ang kahilingan ng maraming netizen lalo na ang nakaupo sa Kongreso. Ngunit hindi natin ito mapipigilan kung tila bagbabayad ang Amerika sa atin mga smugglers sa mga pulpolitiko na ito at wala na silang paki sa mga taong bayan kaya naman. Pilit na binabatikos ang ating Pangulo at mga pulpolitiko na opisyalis na pumapayag na papuntahin dito ang 50,000 Afghanistan sa bansang Pilipinas. Ang problema nga ng bansang Pilipinas ay tila hindi nila masolusyonan yun pa kayang 50,000 Afghanistan na papasok sa bansang Pilipinas. Panigurado ay maghihirap na naman ang bansang Pilipinas lalong lalo na ang ating mga kababayan. Wal mga kababayan para nga sa karagdagang impormasyon, panoorin nga natin ang buong video. At kung bago ka pa lamang sa aking channel, huwag kalimutan I-click ang subscribe button at notification bell para lagi kang updated sa ating mga bagong video. At para sa sulit viewers natin dyan, maraming maraming salamat sa walang sawang pag-suporta. Uh, uh, from the perspective of defending our country from external arm attack, do you believe the... Mutual Defense Treaty between our country and the United States needs to be revised or amended. Uh, Your Honor, the Mutual Defense Treaty between the Philippines and the United States has been existing for uh, a long time and due to the, on my personal uh, opinion, Your Honor, due to the uh, developments in the uh, strategic environment, there could be necessary changes to the Mutual Defense Treaty, but that would be subject to the discussion between the two countries, Your Honor. I ask this question, General, because under Article 2 of the Mutual Defense Treaty, It states that in order for the parties to achieve the objective of the treaty more effectively, the parties by self-help and mutual aid, by self-help or separately and jointly, by self-help and mutual aid, must maintain their individual and collective capacity to resist arm attack. So, uh, as you said, this Mutual Defense Treaty was agreed between the parties in, I think, in 1952, meaning to say it's already 71 years old. In your own assessment, is the Philippines capable of resisting arm attack, for example, coming from mainland China? Sir, uh, on my opinion, sir, the Philippines cannot defend itself against uh, aggression from uh, external threat, in particular, 
People's Republic of China because uh, of our because of the very limited capability of the armed forces of the Philippines. You general, that is why I think the defense treaty has not achieved its own objective because the objective is for the parties either by self-help or by mutual aid should maintain their capacity both of them either individual or collective capacity to maintain to, to resist arm attack and considering that we have not achieved that the united states did not do its obligation it is supposed to be a mutual aid the united states has no problem of defending itself probably from any aggressor but under the obligations in this treaty the united states is obliged to help us so that we can achieve that capacity to resist arm attack they have not done this in 70 years am i correct mr general uh, yes sir yes your honor so uh what do you think uh, we should do to uh, pressure the United States to do their its obligation under this treaty? Ngayon, who are the Afghan uh, applicants? Sila yung mga tumulong sa U.S. nung sila ay may presence pa sa Afghanistan. Many of them were their translators and so on. However, uh, but most of them, one way or another, including their families, have helped the United States during the time of their conflict there. So, <clears throat> oh, na medyo may slide to boy. Thank you very much for those telling me na get well. <coughs> okay. Actually, may water naman ako. So, uh, kailangan yun, yun yung mga ano, yun yung mga facts that were established was that, yun nga, these Afghan applicants are mostly friends of the U.S. plus their families because tinulungan sila during the time na may U.S. presence pa sa Afghanistan. And they did so, supposedly, at great risk to their lives. And the U.S. Uh, troops, or the U those who were uh, the U.S. presence, when they pulled out, like they did when, in, in Saigon before, uh, when they pulled out, they had to leave behind these people. And these, some of them may have suffered greatly uh, because of their connection to the U.S. troops when they were present in Afghanistan. <clears throat> So, base sa U.S. law, kailangan ang processing nila is in a third country. At na apparently, ni-request ng U.S. na sa atin ang processing nila. So, bakit nagkaroon ng U.S. presence sa Afghanistan? The same reason why there was a Russian presence in Afghanistan. Kaya mahaba yung history na yan. I think we should have to set aside one period. And I might have to consult muna si SAS also on that one. Um, yung yung knowledge ko on that right now would be too sketchy for it to have any value. So, double research ko muna and magkoconsulta muna ako doon sa ibang mga eksperto <coughs> bago natin i-discuss yung history na yun. Alright. So, ako maingay it's because I'm on EDSA. Anyway, so, US law dictates that the processing will be in a third country. Uh, third country meaning it's not in the country of origin of the persons who are applying and it's not in the United States. Now, the question about why it should be in the Philippines was not answered. Kasi tinanong yan ni Senator Aimee at ang sabi of course ni, uh, ni Ambassador Babes and ni Secretary Manalo is that they will ask this of the U.S. Uh, when, when they do get to talk if, or when they do get to talk to them again. <clears throat> Okay, sabi ni Charlie Whiskey, please don't use all caps. Uh, yes, we will discuss the Vietnamese boat people later on. All right? We were compensated for that, by the way. And those were economic refugees. All right. Uh, yung sa Vietnamese, refugee status po sila. Itong Afghan applicants, they are not refugee status. Sabi na yan very clearly. So, bakit importante ang refugee status? Buti naman din natanong mo. Okay, anong refugee status? Kapag ikaw nag-apply ng asylum or nag ano your um kami your uh, how do you call this fleeing a country where you are subjected to oppression, danger to your life, etc. for most likely for your beliefs, then you can be classified as a refugee. When you seek uh, to ano to escape 
from that oppression, then refugee in status mo. What are the rights of refugees? Mayroon yung primary right dito, yung tinatawag na non-refoulement. Um, it's spelled N-O-N, refoulement. Okay, so, but it's French, so it's non-refoulement. At least that's how my professor pronounced it. I hope I'm saying it right. Para dun sa mga ano, magaling o bihasa sa wikang Pranses, i-correct niya na lang ako kung mali ako. Okay. So, ang non-refoulement non means that there, you cannot return them to their country of origin, particularly if there is danger of oppression or loss of life or ano, danger to the person in the country of origin. Hindi ka pwedeng isole. Okay? Also, may rights then universally to citizenship, but there is no obligation for any country to give that citizenship. What you cannot do is re render a person stateless. So, um, niliwanag yon yung non, na hindi sila refugees. Now, how does that affect it? Yung mga pupunta dito uh, for the processing of their special immigrant visas are not to be considered refugees. No, Mrs. L, not even economic refugees. Pero ang tanong ni Senator Aimi, and therefore, what is their status here? What visa are we going to give to them? Na? And are we obligated to give them a visa? Okay, so this raised a, a question. Sino ang mag ng mga pupunta dito sa Pilipinas? And... What visa are we going to give to them? What status are we going to give to them? So, Tanel, okay. Uh, hindi rin po ito nasagot. Kasi ang sabi is, so, ibig sabihin, they will be processed twice. Saan po gagawin yung pag sa kanila for purposes of issuing a visa for entry to the Philippines? Diba? Hindi naman sila turista. Kasi hindi naman sila pwedeng umikot-ikot. So, what do we give them? A special uh, temporary residency status, limited movement, and so on, subject to certain conditions. Sabi ni Dato Ron, sino ang magagasto sa pagstay nila dito sa Pilipinas? Well, according to Ambassador Babes, the U.S. will spend for the costs. Ang tanong, magkano yun? And have we determined what the costs are? Hindi pa rin po alam yan. <clears throat> uh, sabi ni Ate G, pambihira ang gobyerno natin, ang daming katutubo na mahirap at walang bahay na matino, hindi matulungan ng gobyerno, pero mga Afghans, all the way ang gobyerno. Um, isa pa yun. Uh, sabi kasi ni Secretary Manalo, it's just an idea proposed by the U.S., Pero sabi ni Senator Aimee, but that's not what Ambassador Romualdez said. In fact, uh, Ambassador Romualdez gave her the impression na nagne-negotiations na o nag-negotiate na. At hindi pa malinaw kung ano, ang maraming mga bagay na hindi malinaw. Ngayon, nakapagsalita din si Attorney Mike Poa of the Department of Education. Siya po ang kinatawa ni Vice President Inday and who gave... Uh, his opposition or the opposition of the Department of Education because they were consulted for their opinion on this matter. And uh, sabi nila, hindi sila sang ayon because of the security risks. Okay. Sino yung nagtatanong ng non-reformant? Sabi ni Tej, non-refoulement, non pag denied ng U.S. sa atin matitenga. No nga, that's why it was, they were very careful. Sinabi at ni-reiterate ni Secretary Gibo that there is no refugee status. Kasi once magkaroon ng refugee status, may non-refoulement na. So, uh, and we cannot do that. We cannot house them because the agreement is only temporary. So, kailangan liwanagin yung provisions na yun. What happens to these visa applicants should their special immigrant visa be denied by the U.S.? Diba? Ang bibigay rin lang natin, ano din, hindi rin maliwanag, ano yung status nila dito sa Pilipinas? Anong visa ang ibibigay natin? 
saan sila magstay um, and so on so what what can we kasi that in, that's housing food um, education for the children who will be staying here and so on so what what are we giving them exactly uh, sabi ni Fe Maria kailangan po nila ng security kapag ganon, attorney, kapag dito sila sa Pinas. So, if sinong gagastos? Yun na nga, ang sinasabi nila, it's the US, uh, sabi ng PNP, they uh, they will be ready naman just in case they are called upon to provide that security. Hmm. Ngayon, um, as it turns out, hindi kasi nung una maliwanag. We want to process tayo ng all about 30,000 to 50,000 applicants. And they will be arriving in batches, allegedly, monthly of about 1,500 and so on, number of applicants coming into the country every month. Hindi ang tagal, sabi ni Senator Amy, and how long will they be here? Now, ano yung difference nga? Now, ito ang makikita natin uli, yung difference between the, ref, the Vietnamese refugees who are actual refugees and the Afghans who are applicants. Applicants lang of special immigrant visas to the United States. And dahil wala sila sa US, hindi mag apply yung non refumot sa kanila din sa US. <coughs> so, Tama din naman yung mga tanong tungkol dun sa um, bakit ginagawa ng US nito sa atin. Well, first of all, sabi nga naman nila is that yung batas ng US says na hindi pwede sa kanila yung processing. May batas sila. But ang tanong ni Senator Amy, but why the Philippines? Pakistan is certainly nearer to Afghanistan and there are also US there's ano, also US bases there or a US base. Diba? So, hindi rin ine-explain why we are being singled out to be the stopover point. Ang sabi lang ni Ambassador Babes, it's an idea. The U.S. requested it, baka sakali, and so on. But obviously, it is it has gone beyond ideas kasi kahit ang DFA ay nag-conduct na ng consultations with other departments. Kung kaya't nagbigay ng opinion si Attorney Mike Poa of the Department of Education. Um, hi kay Paul Galang ah. Sabi ni Francis Correct me if I'm wrong po Kung ang US ang gagastos Bakit sa kanilang bansa Bakit sa kanilang bansa na lang Bakit sa Pinas pa What for Ayun nga yung sinasabi ko Is that according to US law Hindi pwede sa US It has to be in a third country Pero ang tanong Bakit sa Pinas Of all the other US allies Bakit dito Ah. Sabi ni Emil, yung lugar na ginabint ng Vietnamese noon sa Bataan, dalawa po, yung sa Vietnamese refugees before, Bataan and Palawan. So I don't know kung existent pa po kasi matagal na po silang wala dito. Sabi ni Tai J Tai J Logic lang naman, parang di nag-iisip. Dami natin problema. Pwede ba naman yan? Tayo pa ba po problema? Sabi ni, ano, ni, na, ni nagko-comment sa Luminous Group. I totally object on this matter. Kahit pa temporary, the U.S. is big enough to accommodate these, ref, accommodate these refugees or take them to Guantanamo. Guantanamo. Hindi tayo nakinabang sa kanila at hindi rin tayo nakikinabang ngayon. Sabi ni Francis, Francis, Sir Francis, mas makakamura pa US kung sa Pakistan. Gusto nila ilipat, ilipat sa Pilipinas. Hi kay Arcel de Leon sa Negros Occidental. Alright. So, hi po kay Ma'am Serena. Sabi ni BJ, ang layo naman ng stopover ng Af Afghanistan. Totoo. So, yun nga, tinanong din ni Senator Amy, why not Guam? Why not, ano, why not the other allies ng US? Why not Japan? Oh, and so on. Wala eh. Uh, eh. Well, para sa akin, okay. Isa ang reason na nakikita ko 
na posibleng kung bakit kinoconsider natin. Would they might, yung mga authorities natin dito sa Pilipinas might be negotiating for payment. Baka naman in the process, isama nila, nabayaran na din nila yung pagstay sa nine bases dito, nine military camps dito ng mga US troops. Yun lang ang nakikita po. But that's a wild guess on my part. Sabi ni Angel, hindi kaya po hinahanda na ng US yan mga refugees. Hindi nga po sila refugees eh. Di ba mga nagtatrabaho na yan sa kanila? Uh, yung daming comments. Um, ay, no, teka. Sabi pa ng comments, sandala. Uh, no, wala yung isa. Sabi ni Joshua naman, bakit dito? to propagate Al-Qaeda para makapasok totally yung US sa bansa natin. Well, personally, because the US vets them, I don't think Al-Qaeda to mga to. Okay. Uh, nakachamba din ang lives si Fujiko. Haven't caught up with this issue. Did they say how many Afghans? 30 to 50,000. Ang tanong, what is it to us? Ano pa kinabang natin? Good question. Sabi ni Ma'am John, I don't believe the U.S. Mamaya niyan, iwan na lang ang mga refugees atin at di na nila balikan mga liars sa U.S. government. You know, some years ago, um, we were very concerned about yung paggamit ng ating backdoor. Hindi na po ng Philippine immigration. This was before, ano, before the time of President Duterte. Na nakakapasok dito sa Pilipinas were, were, ano, and it was deliberate on their part na yung may mga religious leaders coming from Afghanistan who were, uh, according to some of the military sources, teaching a very, very dangerous ideology. And uh, they were, in some areas, allegedly oppressing the katutubo here. Lalong-lalo na yung mga kasama nilang ano, Muslim na pinopulis pati yung ano yung kasuotan samantalang sinasabi ng ilang mga katutubo sa atin na base sa kanilang mga kustumbre eh hindi naman taliwas sa paniniwala uh, that became an issue that was brought to the attention of the NCCA Wellness Legal Council so ang pinaka recommendation namin doon ay for the Bureau of Immigrations to heavily police this and to inform us of the changes in the communities regarding that. Charlie Whiskey, yes. Bawal ang all caps. Uulitin ko po. Bawal po ang all caps. Tama naman si Ma'am Ninita nung pinagbabawal kayo. Hindi ho ba hinahanda ng US yung mga refugees Di ba mga nagtabaho na yan sa kanila just in case biglang sa kupi ng China ang Taiwan? Hindi po naman sila galing sa Taiwan, galing sila sa Afghanistan. Bakit nila ihahanda for that purpose? Parang hindi ko pa po nakikita yung connection dyan. Uh, sabi ni The Junior Explorer, walang tiwala ang Amerikano sa mga Afghans, pinasubo lang sila ginamit. Oo. Oh. Sabi ni Storm, yung malaking problema po dyan ay conflict sa local population at risk sa national security, hindi sa gastos. Wala po tayong gastos dyan. I hope not. Ang kulit ni Charlie Whiskey, unang-una sir, bawal po ang all caps. Pangalawa, sinabi ko na po yung difference between the Vietnamese who are refugees or were categorized as refugees and the U.S. has been very careful about categorizing the Afghans as applicants for the special immigrant visas. Hindi daw po sila refugees. Wal mga kababayan, dito natin makikita na marami pa rin matapang na opisyales na kinokontra nga ang desisyon ni President Bongbong Marcos. Sana ay huwag na muli magpaalipin sa bansang Pilipinas. Ito lang ang tanging kahilingan ng ating kababayan at ilan-ilan na matitino mga opisyales at pag-aralan maigi ang mga desisyon bago pumayag. Hindi yung kasasabi ay papayag agad. 
wal mga kababayan. Para nga sa karagdagang impormasyon, just comment below sa ating comment section ang inyong mga opinion at ating pag-uusapan.